Et Madame Karine Martin à nous faire part de la de la tradition taoïste. I'd like to call on Karine Martin and talk about the Taoist tradition. Uh, she's a pharmacist, a trained pharmacist, and has spent 15 years in China in temples as a Taoist nun. After getting a PhD in religious studies in Hong Kong, she's now back in France. So she works at the French Taoist Center, and she's going to make an important contribution to our roundtable so that we can understand uh, uh, what Taoism contributes to this. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to speak to this very interesting uh, roundtable and conference in general. This inspired me to write something which I think is a linkage between my research in neuroscience uh, and the spiritual training that I've had through Taoism. The title is Meditation, a Method Linking Ancient Sages uh, to 21st Century Scientists. Uh, Lao Tzu, in the classic of clarity and calmness, uh, states uh, that the heart of man naturally and spontaneously aspires to peace and clarity. This classic even states uh, that the natural state of a man's heart and spirit is peace and clarity. This state uh, is therefore not something that has to be created but restored. So to what extent is this axiom useful for us today? What do terms such as clarity and peace in the heart mean? As I understand it, clarity is the route to understanding. Understanding is the path to tolerance and tolerance is the path of fraternity and fraternity is the path of peace. A peaceful heart uh, is that of a man who is at peace with himself. A person in pe at peace with him or herself is a heart at peace with others. And a heart at peace with others is a heart that is open and generous. A generous heart uh, is able to see each and every one of us as a brother or sister and this is what allows fraternity between beings to emerge. However, it says in this text uh, that although the heart spontaneously aspires to clarity and peace, it is a desire uh, that uh, distracts you from this path. Uh, now as I've seen it very often uh, desires are born out of fear. Fear causes us to unsheath our sword, uh, raise our voices uh, and express insults and commit violent acts. Uh, the fear of missing out uh, leads to theft. The fear gives birth to hate and the fear of others gives birth to hate or the fear of losing uh, gives birth to aggression. When blinded by desire and fear, we lose our way and our heart moves away from its natural state of goodness. How can we get back on the right track? Uh, the two qualities of uh, heart, uh, peaceful and clear, can be achieved by developing our uh, capability to observe uh, one's own inner states, which allows us to understand this uh, mechanism of our uh, emotional states. Uh, Lao Tzu says in Tao Te Ching that understanding the other is important, but understanding oneself is even more important. And he adds uh, that controlling oneself is even greater. It's true, how many of us begin our day with the desire to do good and to be good, but unfortunately we end the day by insulting the driver that's just cut you in or 
taken the parking space just in front of you that you're about to take uh, often happens in Paris. Uh, or getting angry with our child who just beat the soup on your shirt. So I do that. I'm talking about myself, not just. Nonetheless, uh, although we had good intentions, uh, we expressed this side of ourselves that is the opposite of the person we would like to be. Uh, so what are the solutions when good intentions are not enough? and do not allow us to manage our feelings and thoughts. So scientists in recent years have studied this question with the aim of finding solutions for and helping the people who are riddled with anxiety, sorrow, black thoughts, anger or stress, which is the major illness of our time. Among the many tools that have been studied, some of which are simple and accessible to all, uh, clinical studies have shown very positive uh, results. And here, of course, I'm talking about meditation. This uh, technique uh, described in texts over 2,000 years old uh, now constitute a subject for study in the 21st century. When I talk about ancient texts, I'm not only referring to those of Taoism. The notion of meditation it also exists in many other religions or traditions, whether they be Christian, Muslim, Hindu religions or traditions, meditation is there. And meditation exists in many different forms, whether it be that practice in a lotus position or the apophatic state or ecstasy into which a Christian or a Muslim find themselves in the middle of prayer. In laboratory conditions, you can study a meditation state through ECGs, thanks to the alpha wave. And we see in this state that the two halves of the brain work together in perfect harmony. This is different from what usually happens where the normal mode is that of the beta wave. During the beta phase, we have a dominant half of the brain. Usually, it's the left-hand side of the brain, which makes it easier to do analytical work and to think, but deprives us of intuitive perception and the creativity and holistic view of the right half of the brain. In a meditative state, the subject feels that thought is slowing down or even stopping completely. And this brings a feeling of of, good, of well-being and serenity and sometimes even feeling of being in osmosis with the divine aspect of the universe. It's been shown that these feelings of well-being go well beyond the actual meditation session itself. Through regular practice, the individual can feel happier and calmer throughout the day, the rest of his life, every day. Thanks to scientific study, meditation has therefore become a tool of the 21st century used in hospitals and clinics and other places where we care for people. It's also been proven that meditation makes it possible to diminish violence. I myself was able to observe an improvement in well-being and behavior and less violence in inmates of the prison in Hong Kong where I taught meditation. In just a few sessions, the inmates had this feeling of well-being and were much less violent in their behavior to others. Peace reigned. In classes, when I was at school myself, I remember how hard it was for me to learn algebraic formula. But I have no recollection of the algebra itself because that was only useful to get me through my final exams at the end of the year. And I'm talking about this because it's true that at school you learn a lot, but subsequently you forgot 
you forget a lot of it because it's not really any use in everyday life. Uh, and it's uh, true that despite the diversity of the subjects taught, uh, the current uh, educational cultural system is short on teaching of human spirit and human nature. If the very youngest children have this opportunity to learn methods uh, to have a peaceful heart to stabilize uh, their minds uh, and understand emotional processes uh, that they will be going through they will therefore become calmer more peaceful people with a greater sense of fraternity able and willing to contribute positively to society the universal law that I wanted to report to you on here is this axiom that all of us are born with a heart that is by nature benevolent and understanding and each one of us therefore has the necessary qualities to create a society that is at peace. Unfortunately it is very often our desires or our peers or our fears which upset this balance and create chaos and suffering. Fortunately, man can use various meditative uh, techniques or prayer and therefore has uh, the means of calming a tormented and frightened heart. Uh, these techniques uh, or which can lead to a meditative uh, state either through prayer, visualization of divinities uh, or the repetition of mantras are good beneficial tools for today's society and they can be put into practice by people of all religions. They should therefore be included in school or preschool programs as a way of preserving peace and a way of improving our societies and individual well-being. These methods for calming the heart are a genuine treasure chest uh, that has been created and passed down over generations by uh, the wise men uh, over the centuries and uh, could well be one of uh, the key remedies uh, to the suffering and evils of today's society. Thank you.